All right, 8 2 is multiplying and factoring. Our learning objective is to multiply a monomial by a polynomial and to factor a monomial from a polynomial. Your essential understanding is you can use the distributive property to multiply a monomial by a polynomial. All right, I'm going to show you three different ways you can use the distributive property. Either one of these is fine, but I wanted to respect the work that your junior high teachers did with you guys um, and encourage you to continue to use the method that you learned. So if I'm going to multiply 2x times the quantity 3x plus 1, I, we're going to do, there's uh, rainbows, which I love. There is the box method, which I'm okay with, and there's the tile method, which is fine. Um, each of these ways makes sense to me, but uh, I prefer, personally, I prefer rainbows. Um, so if I'm going to do rainbows, 2x times the quantity 3x plus 1, I just distribute 2x to the 3x and get 6x squared, 2x times 1 and get 2x. If I'm doing box, I have 2x on one side of my box, 3x and 1 on the other, and I just multiply these two items, sorry, it's 2x. So here would be 3x times 2x. The 3 and the 2 get multiplied together, and the x and the x get multiplied together. And here I would go 1 times 2x. The 1 and the 2 get multiplied together, and x has nobody to multiply by, so he just stays. You get 6x squared plus 2x. Lastly, but not leastly, we've got tile. This is where we break up each of our components. So if I have two x's, I actually write two x's. If I have three x's, I actually write three x's. If I have a one, I write one. And then I do my multiplication. So x times x is x squared. x times x is x squared. x times x is x squared. x times 1 is 1x. One x. x times x is x squared. x times x is x squared. x times x is x squared. x times 1 is 1x. One and then I just count up how many of them I have. Make some room for myself. In this case, I have 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6 x squared, and 1, 2, 3, x. As you can see, each method gives you the right answer. And you just have to decide, and maybe if you don't want to decide and you want me to decide for you, I pick the first one because that's the one I like the best. That's as, as far as it gets. Okay, so let's do, um, let's try one. We're going to multiply 5n by 3n to the third minus n squared plus Eight. And I'm going to, because I'm gracious and magnanimous and awesome, I'm going to use the box method. Even though it's not my baby, I'm going to use it. So I'm going to put 5n on the side. And I'm going to do 3n to the third, negative n, and an 8 on the top. Okay, so what happens in this box? We got 5n times 3n to the third, 
5 times 3 is 15. n to the 1 times n to the 3rd. You guys remember this from last chapter? We add the exponents. 1 plus 3 is 4. This one is 5n times negative n. 5 and a negative will give you negative 5. n times n gives you n squared. Lastly but not leastly, 5n times 8. 5 times 8 is 40. n, he doesn't have anybody to hang out with, so he just gets written as n. So at the end of the day, the answer is 15n to the 4th minus 5n squared plus 40n. End of the day. All right, so I dropped an exponent, so I'm putting it back on. We have not abandoned ship. So this is actually 3, which makes our answer. To the third power. All right. One piece of essential understanding is that factoring a polynomial reverses the multiplication process. We're going to find the greatest common factor of the polynomial's terms, and we're going to use reverse distribution. It's fun. It'll be good times. Hmm. All right. So let us look at this problem here. What is the GCF, which is short for greatest common factor, of 3x to the 4th minus 9x squared minus 12x. So the first thing we need to do is break each one of these down into its pieces. So we've got 3x to the 4th. We've got negative uh, 9x squared, and we've got negative 12x. So we are going to, this is 3 times x times x times x times x. This is negative 1 times 3 times 3 times x times x. And this is negative 1. Now, 12 is a funny bunny. He's 3 times 4, but 4 can be broken down into 2 times 2. you got to break it all the way down. So it's 3 times 2 times 2, and then just 1x. Alright, greatest common factor means they all of them have to have this in common. So I am going to highlight each of the commonalities. So they all have 1, 3. Do they have more than 1, 3 in common? No. They all have an x. Do they have more than 1 x? No, because this one runs out of it. So the greatest common vector is 3x. So what you do, the process for this, and I'm going to write it, it's a, a two-step process. You break it down. And you find the common. Easy peasy. Alright, so we are going to answer this question, what is the factored form? Uh, 9x to the 6th plus 15x to the 4th plus 12x squared. And I'm going to break each one of these down. So if I have 
9 x squared. We learned that's 3 times 3 times 6 x's. And then I have 15 x to the fourth. That is a 3 and a 5 and 4 x's. And last but not least, I have a 12 x squared, which if you remember, it's a 3, a 2, and a 2. And 2 x's. Okay, so we broke it down. <laughs> broke it down. So now that it's all broken down, we can find the comments. So let's find the common ground. So do we have a three in common for each of these guys? Yes. Yeah, so let's, three is a yes. Do we have a five in common for each of these? No. Do we have a two in common for each of these? No. How about an X? A two. Yeah, each of them has an X, and I still have X's to give. So, Nathan's right, there are two X's for each one. Yay! So, the GCF... Is 3X squared. But we're factoring. So, we're going to put the 3X squared on the outside. So the GCF is 3x squared. Yay! And then we want to make an accounting of what's left. So we break it down and we got to say what's left here. Here I have a 3 and four x's. Here I have a five and two x's. And here I just have a two times two. So the greatest common factor is three x squared, so we put that on the outside. And then on the inside of our parentheses, all of our leftovers get written down just like Thanksgiving. All the leftovers stay inside. And that's how you factor.